Hi, I'm recording this video for my A-level electronics students. Uh, we're having a look at MPLAB XIG and we're going to look at some example code. I'll make a few changes to this just to demonstrate how we can check for a particular value in our code. Now, uh, we're not going to look at every line of this, so let's just start though by just checking this line just to make sure that you understand that I have uh, declared a symbol count that equates to a particular numeric value. In this case, it's hexadecimal. 72 and that we're going to use that to access a particular um, file location which is going to be address um, 72 okay so you can see it there it's actually currently highlighted in red now if you haven't uh, previously accessed um, that panel you can easily open that up go window uh, target memory views and file registers you might want to rearrange your screen you know I've got a wide screen here so push, push it over to the side here Right, okay, so um, scrolling on down in the code, you'll see that I'm moving a literal value, in this case, let's put a three, into working file register, and then I'm then going to move the contents of the working file register into uh, 72, which is going to stick it in the um, file register of 72, okay, which it looks like it is in there at the moment, but I think that's a, from the previous uh, when I've just been running through the code. So, got a breakpoint there already, and Let's just quickly run this then. And so we're currently at that point. We've stopped at the breakpoint. So let's just quickly check. Special function registers currently uh, working file register is zero because because we haven't yet loaded the three. So let's just do F7. Now you can see I've loaded three into the working file register. And then if we look at file registers, um, seven two is currently uh, zero there. Okay. So if I then do F7. Um, now it looks like it's not updated, but if I just go off that and just go back onto it, you'll see, hopefully you'll see, uh, that's interesting, um, it's not actually loaded up, uh, so that's strange. Sometimes it doesn't show, so let's just open that again. Uh, I, I don't know whether it's a bug in the system, but let's just open up file registers, and then there, there we go, okay, so 70 or 70 because it's hexadecimal and then 02, so that, that's the one. We have proven that we've loaded up decimal three into that location. Now, um, so that works. Now, uh, let's ignore the remaining code just for a moment. Um, if you wanted to check whether you've got three in a particular location, probably the easiest way to, um, to check is to actually subtract three, because if you subtract three, if you've got three there, and you, or you've got a number which might possibly be three, if you subtract three from it, then you can check what the the um, the remainder was. Now, if the remainder is zero, then you know you had a match. So that's that's actually what we're going to do now. Okay. So I'm going to move another literal value. Uh, in this case, we're going to we're going to make a match straight away, and I'm then going to subtract the contents of the working file register from the file count, and then so you're saying. That's now the contents of the working file register, and I'm going to subtract the contents of the working file register from the file. So it takes two arguments now. It takes that, which is the file name, and then also the destination where you want the result to be. So once you've subtracted that number, you want the answer. Where do you want to store the answer? I want to actually store it back in the working file register. Um, w equates to zero. You could have just Double zero, but I don't find that particularly readable. I think that's better. And um, that W equates comes from the include file. So let's just uh, step through the code again. And so we're going to load up, let's use special function registers, load up three into the uh, working file register. So we've got three in there. Then we're going to move it into uh, the file register, which, yep, yeah, it's got three in there at the moment. Okay. Then uh, we load up three again. I mean, actually, it's not going to do anything in doing that. But, um, and then let's just quickly look at the status register. Now, if I hover over that, hopefully this is captured by my screen capture software. Um, it shows us that the Z bit is currently zero. So hopefully you saw that, that um, there's a zero below the Z bit. Uh, because at the moment the previous operation didn't set the Z flag, the zero flag. Okay, so now if I do F7, now remember I had three and I subtracted three, which would result in zero. And hopefully you can see there that the Z bit is now set to one. So we could test that and then we could do conditional branching. 
Now, I'll just um, delete those lines over quick. In fact, what we do, it might be worthwhile just, just proving that if you subtract 2 from 3, you don't set the Z bit. So let's just quickly run this again. So uh, let's just skip through those lines. So we, we had 3, we subtracted 2, so we're left with 1. And then if you look at the status special function register, you'll see the Z bit is 0. It's clear, OK? Because subtracting 2 from 3 does not result in 0. So Z bit is not set. Z bit is just basically a flag to say, you know, the previous or an operation uh, resulted in, um, in 0. All right, OK. Um, it might be worthwhile actually doing one other example. Say, for example, if you subtract a number that's greater um, than the uh, 3. So let's say if we take 3 and you subtract 4. We know that 3 subtract 3 is 0. Well, 3 subtract 4 is not minus 1. It's actually going to be 255. Let, let's try that. So let's... Uh, Let's view the special function registers. Uh, let's keep an eye on the working register now. So we're going to load up 3, and then we're going to um, load up 4, and then we're going to subtract 4 from the 3, and then we're going to save the result of that back into the working file register. And there you go, 255. So it just proves the point now. It doesn't actually matter really too much what the result is. It's just whether we've got a match. And you can see there's a match, or not a match, by checking the Z bit. So if you look there, Z bit is not. To, um, set so the Z flag is not set because it wasn't a match, didn't result in zero. So knowing that, hopefully that's now made that the, the operation of the subtract working from file clear to you. So if we now look down through my code, I can I can just you know if I want to find uh, it does um, does count match with a five, then I can just load up five into working file register subtract that 5 from whatever count contains and then check uh, the Z bit. So then I can use a conditional branch of bit test file, skip set. So if the Z bit is set, then I know that there was a match. So then I, I skip the next line, which will be to try in the next number. Uh, and then I and then I do some code now at the moment. I've just got an operation. So let's uh, let's assume then that um, our random value is number three. Okay, so we're gonna, if it's number three, then what we're gonna do, we're gonna first of all try, is it a five? No, it's not. Then so we try, is it a four? No, it's not. Then we try, is it a three? And then there's gonna be a match. Okay, so let's let's run through the code. So uh, we're going to let's just look at the working file register. There. So we're gonna we're gonna load it up with um, five. And then we're going to subtract uh, 5 from 3, which does not result in the Z bit being set. Uh, so because the Z bit is not set, uh, it's not going to skip the next line. So it goes to the next line, and then it's going to jump to, uh, or it's going to do the unconditional branch of go to try 4. And then we're going to do the same sort of thing, but with 4. So we're going to subtract uh, 4 from 3. Uh, which you, uh, which as we mentioned earlier, results in 255. So Z bit once again is not set. So then we're going to try it with the three. And then this time around, if you subtract three from three, it's going to result in uh, zero, which means the Z bit is set. Which means then uh, bit test file. So we're testing the Z bit of the file, the file status. And then so then it's going to skip the next line. So then it's going to go to this next line, line 56. And then, you know, whatever the code is that we put in that line. Yeah, no operation at the moment doesn't do anything useful, but hopefully you can see how you could extend that. And then it just goes to the end of the test. OK, um, so we could, you know, we could change this around. So let's just say we'll have um, this time we'll have an immediate match. And we just run this. These special function registers again. So we're going to load up five into our count variable, and then we're going to then uh, subtract five from that. So five minus five is obviously going to give us a zero. So it was the Z bit the status uh, special function register is set, and then so it goes straight to finding the match. 
Okay, hopefully that makes some sense. Uh, there are other ways to do this, of course. This isn't necessarily the best or certainly not the only way, uh, but hopefully that's given some people an idea as to um, how you might do it. Uh, you might also like to consider using some logical operations. Um, bit masking as well might be something that you might need in some circumstances too. Okay, thanks very much for watching. Do please give the video a thumbs up if you found it useful and uh, consider subscribing too. Thanks very much. Goodbye.